Okay, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Sarah Hart. Hello, everybody. We are uh, again doing our Cooking Up Politics show, and we're broadcasting live on Blog Talk Radio, and we're taking callers, and we're also going to show you how to prepare beef fajitas. And beef fajitas are real simple, out of the out of the bag kind of solution to your family's needs when you're kind of in a hurry, long day at work. And you've got some old meat in the refrigerator the night before and you want to figure out, well, how do I make that meat better? We're going to go ahead and show you how to marinate meat overnight, real simple, and it'll be ready for the fajitas the next day. It'll be so tender, your mouth will water. Okay, whenever you get meat that's old like this, it's actually not a bad thing, but you do have to definitely spray it with water put tap water over it, it doesn't matter, any kind of water, as long as you get some of the bacteria out of it. But old meat is actually pretty tender, in fact that's what uh, Angus beef is, it's aged meat. So we're going to show you now how to cut it and slice it for fajitas. You need a really sharp knife, it's best to have a cleaver like this. And I make nice little strips, about a quarter inch thick like that, and always cut away from yourself. It's best to prepare this meat probably one day in advance, and that's exactly what I'm doing. You've got all your meat cut up in little pieces, as small as you can get, and what you want to do is add anything from vinegar, in this particular case I'm going to put red wine vinegar on here. This is just basically a vinegar blend that I have. I make my own vinegar, so it's kind of cool. Use it with basically red wine vinegar is pretty easy to make. Put sugar and wine together, and it'll go on its own. I'm going to use a, a little barbecue sauce, and you want to use very little, about a tablespoon to two tablespoons, depending on how many people and how much meat you're, you're cooking. I, I don't think. Uh, using anything more than garlic powder. People are uh, going to love this because, and then some chili powder, and then of course meat tenderizer, which is essential. If you can buy this, uh, it's good to have it around. You can put anything you want on this marinade and it's going to sit overnight. Here's paprika. It's always good to have that in a, in a mix too. It's good for you. All right, so we take all that and we add a little bit more vinegar to the top of it. It's like so, it kind of douse it in vinegar. And then take a spoon and press it all down. And this can basically sit overnight in the refrigerator. And then I'll come back tomorrow. And I guess you're watching the video now, so you can see it how it's being prepped. All right. Okay, so now we take a look at that meat. It's been sitting overnight, and as you can see, it's really kind of tasty and luscious. And so I make sure you cover it. Make sure you it. cover it, and you can cover it with plastic wrap, or what, in my case, I just saved plastic, saved the planet, and I inverted another plate just like the one below it on top of it, and that sits for about a night, and then we're ready to go. So here we are. We're going to show you how. Uh, so I'm going to be cutting up the vegetables to go with our fajitas. And some of the vegetables we have are some peppers, onions, garlic, and David likes to make things a little different, so he adds a little celery to his. So I'm going to bring the camera down and yeah. show you how I do that. It makes a really good taste. So Sarah's going to do a little bit of the cutting, and we're going to talk briefly about politics while she chops oh. these vegetables. One thing I want to show you is just a little trick to cut up bell peppers is you go right by the stem, you cut down by the stem, and then you can cut along the edge to get your start, and then you can cut this, the seeds right out of the bell pepper. There we okay, go. Okay, so uh, today is the eve of uh, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert's uh, rally to restore sanity. So we went and posted on their blog to come on into our room to retain sanity and also uh, begin realizing that laughing at everything isn't going to solve anything. 
And I think John Stewart is really missing the boat here when he's making light of what the Tea Party people are really talking about. And a lot of our supporters are Tea Party members as well. And believe it or not, the Tea Party is not an actual party. They're, uh, they're a nonprofit, and they're create, calling themselves a movement. We, on the other hand, are trying to become a political party. And uh, I'll sneak my face down here, and we can talk about that. Okay, sorry. No, that's okay. I can talk. Just make talk sure with you the check that. And uh, I got it. So okay. what we're doing is actually far more uh, intense and perhaps much harder than what the Tea Party do movie movement has done. Yeah. Uh, they have essentially gotten free advertising from Fox News. They've gotten all kinds of benefits from the Republican Party, and the Republican Party is making statements to the effect that they're going to, you know, fill the offices taken over by some of these Tea Party candidates that win. You know, certain brazen things like that, but the reality is the Tea Party is uh, the American people speaking out about overspending. And that's essentially what they're talking about. We don't agree with their principle of getting rid of Social Security or getting rid of Medicare. We think those programs are really essential. We especially don't like the fact that Obama has gotten rid of the Medicare Advantage program as well. So we're right in the center of the political spectrum. I'm a centrist, and I really believe that we can find a union here between the people that are concerned about overspending and the people that are socially minded people like myself who are concerned about uh, programs that will help people get a hand up. We don't want to hand out to people. We don't want to see more money being thrown into the welfare system, thrown into Social Security. And maybe a lot of you aren't aware that there's over 29 million non-U.S. citizens in the United States collecting Social Security benefits, whether it's welfare or food stamps or SSI or even uh, if Section 8 housing. So we want to actually start to limit the amount of money those non-U.S. citizens get so that we can begin to get our equity back in the Social Security Trust Fund. We've got a whole lot of new ideas in America's Third Party, too, which is different than any other political party, in that we have a really comprehensive platform. When executed, will cost very little to the American taxpayer. We've configured a way in which the government can get a return on investment, and we've got a whole book we're writing right now which details that, and it will be published in 2011. So, I'm so glad that we're here, having a great time. Sarah's showing you how to cut red pepper. And uh, we're going to kind of close down on the YouTube video real soon. But uh, the ultimate goal here is to have glistening, basically caramelized beef, mouth-watering, with all these fresh vegetables mixed around it. And if you can imagine that with a little bit of tomato sauce in the mix, and then you've got yourself your chicken or your beef fajita dish. Uh, beef fajitas are really tasty. And what I do, and I might want to just add this to the, the video as well, yeah. is grab right out of my freezer. I've got, this is how easy this thing is. You can take this beef mix once it's all cooked. It takes about 30 minutes to cook, by the way, on the stove. And you can take corn tortillas, and I store them in the freezer just to save on, you know, so they don't go bad. And pull them out as you need them. And then what I do is sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top and then throw it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and you've got yourself a perfect soft taco. And it's actually low calorie and it's not as uh, bad for you as the white flour stuff that has hydrogenated oil in it. So this is just one of the many ways that you could actually save, economize and eat healthy and maintain the amount of protein you need on a limited budget. And that's something we're all getting here and used to. So. We're going to say goodbye to the YouTube crowd. I want to thank you all for coming in. I want to say uh, join us every every Saturday night as we cook up politics on Ustream and Blog Talk Radio. Take care, everyone.